In this review, I'm having a look at the new little NUC i5. It's got improved ports, a better storage system, and a couple other little tricks up its sleeve. Good afternoon, morning, welcome back to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, my name is WookieXXL and I will be taking you through a review of the new Intel NUC i5. This one in particular has the 10.02.10U, which is a 4-core A3 processor sporting a 1.6 GHz base clock and a 4.2 GHz boost clock. And it does all of that with 25 watts of power draw. So if you're keeping track, that's half of an old 60 watt light bulb is now powering this entire mini PC. I have teamed it up with two 8 gig DIMMs of the crucial 2600 megahertz variety and then a 2TB NVMe our Hikvision E2000 making another appearance which I then sys prep and slap inside the unit so it's effectively a brand new Windows install that is set up on this little Intel NUC. Now the Intel NUC has gone through a number of iterations and I've actually been using them since their very first ones with the little Celeron single core and dual core NUCs which we used for advertising displays. Most of the time we just popped in an 8 gig RAM, a 32 gig M SATA SSD drive back then and then put it to task to run some basic videos. But as you can see with the 4K 60 behind me, this is significantly improved and you'll now be able to stream 4K60 to this device. Absolutely no problems and absolute stunning visual quality, isn't it? Good old 4K. So Intel has improved the graphics performance and the general processing power. If we look at Cinebench scores, for instance, that I did do a couple of runs, the performance was in line with the general 4-core 8-thread setups, especially some older gen stuff that used 30 to 60 watts. This is using a lot less than that and it's running the entire machine. They've also upgraded the storage capacity significantly. So now you can have an NVMe as well as a 2.5 actually in the top of the bay. So whether you have that as an SSD or a spinning disk, effectively you can have four terabytes worth of storage space inside of this little unit. And on the side, it has a little card reader as well. So for a use case scenario there, for instance, if you were a photographer and you wanted to take around something that's even smaller than a laptop that you can hook up pretty much anywhere at any time to any available TV or any sort of anything with an HDMI input, then this suits that purpose absolutely perfectly. And it's going to be significantly cheaper as well. A full setup unit like this will be about 12,000 Rand. And then because it's got that quad core processor, you could even do some image or video editing on it. Rendering is not going to be the quickest you've ever seen, but will it work? It, it actually will, which is kind of cool. Then they've improved the port setup significantly as well. There is now an audio jack on the front of the device with a USB Type-C and then a USB 3 all coming from the front, which just makes it all that more portable and easy to use. Then around back, we do have an RJ45 LAN. We do have two more USBs, an HDMI, and most importantly, a Thunderbolt port. Now, Thunderbolt ports can be used for data as well as display. So this could effectively have two high-end displays coming out of it and should run them absolutely no issues. Now, this isn't going to be for everybody. People that are looking to save space and power, though, then this should be right up your alley. If you're looking to outfit a school center or something to that effect, then this will be absolutely perfect. How much space does it take up? And then if that wasn't enough, you do have a vase amount for it. So for media displays, advertising, maybe even showcasing 4K screens, etc., you could load everything that you needed onto here and use it as a digital media player. And then even for the home case scenario, as a high-end media streaming center or as a sort of light gaming and media type PC, this is absolutely perfect. This will play absolutely anything from yesteryear uh, maybe not crisis, uh, <laughs> that'd be a little bit of a struggle, but if you're aiming for something to play like Microsoft Freelancer, like old classic titles like that, then it's absolutely perfect. 
I really, really do like Intel Max. They make the PC sort of more versatile in a very interesting way. And what Intel has effectively done here is take a laptop motherboard and then fold it back on itself. So the PCB in a, in a laptop usually runs at the top of the laptop under the side like that. Now they've taken it and squashed it all into one like dual layer sort of setup that you can now then add in a whole bunch of extras to and stream HD video like it's absolutely nothing. All in all then the new Intel NUX including the NUX 9 Extreme which I tested before and that still had a 9th gen are looking really really promising. The 11th gen process should be on a 10nm and it should be coming to the laptop and NUX space first. So 25 watt uh, basically a light bulb gets you an entire working PC. I say good job Intel. Anyway, if you guys have enjoyed this review, then please do hit us up with a like and subscribe and I will see you on the flip side.